I'm solving only the Rubik's clock for one full week. The rules are simple. For the next seven days, I'm not allowed to solve any choicey puzzle other than clock, and I have to do at least 12 clock solves every day. I'm pretty sure this is my first clock solve in over a year, and I'm gonna see if I still remember how to solve this puzzle. Take an edge, line it up with a sensor, which it already is. Repeat that for another edge. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oh, one minute and 45 seconds. Now, since I know I got the hang of this method, I'm gonna do 11 more solves just like that. Okay, 102. I nearly got a sub one. My goal right now is to get a sub one single. That's my goal for today. Yes, okay, 57.63, my first ever clock sub one. Wait, no, I think that was a DNF. You see, this clock isn't exactly WCA legal. These pieces here often end up in between numbers. So for example, all these should be in between 11 and 12, and these are afterwards. So pretty sure I DNF that. Yes, okay, this time it was a 50.76, so mission accomplished for today. 49, my first sub 50. Okay, another solve that's just over one minute. Yes, okay, a new clock personal best. And that was my final solve of this average of 12, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Day two, my goal for today is to get a sub one average of 12. Oh, another DNF. Okay, so that was a 54.09 average of 12, with actually more than half of them being sub 50. At this point, you might be thinking, why? Why clock? Clock is probably the most unique WCA event, but it's also probably the most hated, and I don't want to judge it without giving it a fair chance. Plus, I have very, very little experience with clock, um, meaning I can improve a lot with just a little practice. And now, I have a goal. By the end of the week, to have a sub 30 single. On day three, I wanted to learn how to get faster at clock. Were there any new methods or algorithms I could learn? Any tips I could use to make my solves faster? After my research, it seems like speed solving clock is less about learning new methods and new algorithms and more about optimizing the one method that everyone uses to get faster times. One thing I did learn though, is that you apparently don't have to solve the corners on the first side because that'll be taken care of on the second side. So I'm definitely gonna use that in today's solves. Ooh, my first sub 40 solve. So that tip really did work. Sub 30. 29.72. I think I'm gonna set my new goal at sub 30 average. And on day four, my average was 29.62. I'm noticing a pattern here. I set goals for the end of the week and then I'm breaking those the day after I set them. Maybe it's not a good idea to set a goal for the end of the week. And maybe I should be just setting goals for each day. And today's goal, sub 20 single. That was a mistake and here's why. I did my 12 solves and didn't get a sub 20. Okay, not a great way to finish off this average but I'm not gonna give up just yet. I'm gonna do more solves. I'm just gonna keep solving until I get a sub 20 single. Now, one of the tips I got on the speed solving post that I put up was to focus on look ahead. So I'm gonna really be like focusing on look ahead and using my inspection time to plan out my first few moves. And hopefully that'll get me past the sub 20 barrier. So that went not how I thought it would. I did solve after solve and couldn't get a sub 20 until my 75th solve of the day when this happened. Wait, okay, so I wasn't filming this one. I promise I got this but I got a 18.84 and I'm kind of freaking out right now. 75 solves and I got it, I did it. Okay, I learned my lesson from yesterday. No more unrealistic goals. I'm just gonna be trying to go as fast as possible for the next couple days. Wait. I just got a sub 20 just now, like what I was trying to do yesterday for 75 solves, and I just got one on camera right now. Another sub 20, oh my god. Today is the final day of this clock challenge, and I gotta say, I got a lot faster really quickly. On the first day, I could barely even solve clock in like a minute, but now I'm getting sub 20 times, and I'm averaging like sub 25. And the only thing to do now is to do one last average of 12. Okay, a low 20 to start off the average. So my final average of 12 turned out to be a 24.33, which means I improved on this puzzle a lot in this week. Also, I haven't solved three with me in a week. This is the only puzzle I've solved in this entire challenge, but it's finally over. I did gain like a new appreciation for, I guess, this event. I'm definitely gonna do it at the next competition that has it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more cubing content like this, and I'll see you in my next video.